Well, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, on behalf of my colleagues of presenting this presentation. Yeah, it's that one, push click. Yeah, okay. Um, so we heard the title of our presentation and as I said, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers on behalf of all my co-investigators uh, for allowing us to present the preliminary results uh, of our study. As we move forward with expansion of treatment as prevention uh, programs, one of the, the major aspects that's been identified is really uh, the importance of the care cascade and the care continuum. And one of the things we realize is that in North America, it's the United States, and within our own home province of British Columbia, that 20 to 25 percent of indiv individuals are either undiagnosed uh, of their HIV infection or are not linked appropriately to medical care services. So in other words, they haven't undergone basic assessment for their ART eligibility in terms of assessing their CD4 viral load criteria. And interventions to improve HIV testing rates among asterisk populations are required to strengthen and improve the HIV care cascade and uh, strengthen our treatment as prevention uh, interventions. Conditional cash transfers or incentives have been used successfully to improve goal-related activities amongst injection drug using populations. This morning there was a very interesting session uh, on uh, CCT in Africa and other populations, but I'm going to mention here some examples of where incentives have been used successfully, either as vouchers, cash, uh, or gift cards to improve rates of completion of TB screening processes, such as the MANTU skin test, or coming back to review your chest x-ray. And in a randomized control trial of, medical in of monetary incentives uh, for hepatitis B vaccine, uh, incentives were clearly shown to be superior to the services of an outreach nurse for completing the three-step vaccine series. So 69% of individuals compared to 23% of individuals completed their hepatitis B vaccine. In an inner city emergency room program in the United States, servicing uh, uh, injection drug users, uh, use of incentives for completion of post-test counseling were shown again to increase the return rates uh, for participants, and some similar results have been shown in non-injection drug, drug using populations in Africa. Anecdotally, use of incentives uh, was used surreptitiously or uh, unreported in, in Vancouver. And as such, we decided to evaluate the efficacy of offering a modest and financial incentive linked to HIV testing and return for post-test counseling in a substance using population. Included in this analysis was the ability uh, to evaluate the efficacy of incentives for individuals who are known to be HIV positive but not engaged in care in terms of assessing their ART uh, eligibility. To be included in the study, participants had to be adults uh, over 19 years of age to be uh, at risk for HIV based on their substance use as defined below, or known to be HIV positive by self-report with no evidence of a recent evaluation of their HIV status in terms of CD4 count or viral load. They had to reside within Vancouver, and uh, the substance use that they could report was uh, detailed here. It excluded isolated marijuana use, as we did not feel this was a significant risk for HIV. And additional exclusion criteria were individuals who were known to be HIV positive but had received antiretrovirals within the last 12 months as we felt these individuals had markers of engagement in care. This is the uh, fairly uh, straightforward uh, protocol. Uh, overall, 301 individu individuals were randomized either to the control arm where they received standard pre-test and post-test counseling without the use of associated financial incentives or they were randomized to the incentive arm where they received pre- and protest counseling tied uh, to a financial incentive. And then financial incentive is uh, detailed here. So they were offered $10 if they completed uh, laboratory work uh, testing and additional $15 if they returned uh, for their results and to undergo post-test counseling related to those results. For uh, successful completion of the post-test step, they had to uh, return to the, cl the clinic within four weeks of initial uh, laboratory testing. And all individuals uh, were recruited between February and August of 2012. Uh, the sample size uh, of 301 individuals was chosen to, uh, to be powered to determine a difference of 15% between the two arms. The protocol obviously was uh, approved by our local uh, university ethics board and supported uh, by NIDA and the CHR Canadian HIV Trials Network. Statistical uh, analysis was fairly straightforward. Uh, Chi-squared or Fisher's exact tests were used for analysis of in comparison of categorical values, or Cox and Rank sum test was used for continuous variables. Uh, we also conducted a multivariable logistic uh, confounder model 
uh, to estimate the probability of completing testing and returning to receiver test results with the specific variable of interest in the confounder model being receipt of incentives compared to the control arm. Here are the baseline characteristics of our population. You can see they're fairly uh, 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 well matched. Uh, the majority of individuals were male uh, and representative of our, our local uh, demographic. Majority were Caucasian or Canadian Aboriginal. Significant proportion of individuals in the population reported unstable housing uh, or homelessness. Uh, drug use patterns were fairly similar between the populations. There were some differences uh, that ultimately arise. Uh, you can see more individuals used multiple drugs in the incentive arm, but we had quite a lot of data missing in the control uh, group, which we're trying to, uh, to determine the cause for, given this was randomized. Um, here are the results of our intervention, and you can see in the arm that received the incentive, 100% of individuals went and completed their laboratory work, their laboratory work and 83% of them returned to receive post-test post counseling. This is significantly different compared to individuals who are uh, in the control arm. So in the control arm, you can see that only 32% of individuals uh, randomized to the control arm actually went to uh, complete their laboratory work, despite receiving standard uh, counseling about the risks of HIV and the need for appropriate testing. And even fewer of them uh, returned uh, for review of their uh, results. So only 11% of individuals returned to review uh, their results. So obviously at both steps, both for completion of the laboratory work testing and for return for post-test counseling, uh, the incentive was highly significant uh, uh, in, in terms of achieving um, behavioral change or testing change. In our confounder model, uh, where we show you only the, the uh, variable of interest, which is receipt of incentive. Uh, you can see that receiving incentive was highly associated with an odds ratio of 31 uh, for completing both steps of the screening process. And this was adjusted for uh, the other factors, uh, age, gender, ethnicity, housing status, and frequency of, of uh, drug use. If we focus now uh, purely on the individuals who are known to be HIV positive, 30 individuals out of 300, so about 10% of the population, was known to be HIV positive, uh, but not engaged in care with no recent CD4 or viral load. Uh, again, uh, the, these individuals were randomized fairly standardly between the two arms. And again, you can see in the incentive arm, even knowing your HIV status, uh, uh, the incentive made a huge difference in terms of people going for laboratory work testing to evaluate the CD4 and viral load and returning to review these results. So 100% of individuals went for uh, their lab work, and 92% of them returned for post-test counseling, compared to only 52 and 29% of individuals in the control arm, respectively. And I think this is very important. If you look at the two bars below, we can see the median CD4 cell count in both groups uh, was actually relatively low in terms of what we'd consider uh, indications for starting antiretroviral therapy in British Columbia. So both groups had a median CD4 count less than 500. And you can see if you look at the incentive arm, the lower range of the intercortical range was actually 120. So there's a significant proportion in this population that has very advanced HIV that was not engaged in care that had been motivate, motivated for testing uh, through the use of incentives. The viral load was fairly similar between the two arms. Uh, we also completed hepatitis C screening. So 122 individuals who uh, went for laboratory work were found to be hepatitis C antibody uh, positive. And of course, because uh, of differences in testing patterns, uh, more individuals were tested in the incentive arm. Uh, but if we look at positivity between the two arms, uh, there was not a statistically significant difference uh, between those two groups. Interestingly, only 71% of individuals had self-reported hepatitis C status at the beginning of the study, suggesting that 42% of individuals either weren't aware of their hepatitis C status or didn't regard it as being significant enough to, to, to mention, which I think is also important when we look eventually at hepatitis C therapies. There are limitations to the study. Obviously, this is a single center study with a relatively circumscribed, well-described drug-using population in our downtown side neighborhood, and therefore may not be generalizable to other populations. Although it wasn't an endpoint of this particular intervention, I will point out we didn't identify any new HIV cases in the 300 individuals screened. And of, as I mentioned earlier, we were missing uh, drug use patterns in terms of frequency of drug use for subjects more, more statistically significant in the control arm, which may influence some of the results. And the future directions of the study are actually to evaluate incentives in a non-randomized fashion now that we uh, believe this may work. We want to see whether the randomization step was a, a limitation. We're going to also look, similar to HBTN uh, in the United States, whether incentives can improve uh, engagement and retention in ART programs uh, in Vancouver. 
In conclusion, uh, I would like to say that the use of modest financial incentives, increased rates of HIV testing, and post-test follow-up amongst uh, drug users, significantly more individuals with known HIV but no obvious prior engagement in care completed in uh, laboratory work in the incentive arm, uh, and therefore incentives uh, may be a strategy for engaging hard-to-reach populations as a component of expansion of treatment as uh, prevention programs, but the cost-effectiveness of this in, uh, strategy must still be determined. I'd like to acknowledge our study participants and study personnel, and again, uh, the funding uh, support from NIDA. Thank you.